Hey everybody, this is Deb with Truthification Chronicles and we're going to talk a little bit about Gitmo. Would you like to be a Gitmo observer to go down there and watch one of the military trials going on? Guess what? You could do that. That is possible. It's something that people from Indiana are doing. Hello, who's your girl? pretty proud of Indiana for doing something like this, but it's kind of weird how it's all put together, and I'm not real sure why it was put together in the first place. I kind of suspect it was done during Obama's administration, I think in 2014, and I wonder if it was to try to show how cruel we Americans were to these terrorists. And I don't think it was for good purposes, but they did incorporate this thing and they created it where you could go and you could actually observe what was happening in Gitmo. Hmm, interesting? Well, this is a blog here and again, as usual, all the links will be down below so you can check them out for yourself. Here we have this particular project and it was done through Indiana University McKinney School of Law program and it was program in international human rights law they call it PERL P-I-H-R-L PERL and so this was a thing where these people could go and they could be an NGO observer down at Gitmo or you could observe the trials actually up in Maryland yeah Fort Meade in Maryland where they had a secure video link that you could be witness there. This may interest more the people who like law because this is a program for people who are getting their, what is it, their Juris Doctor, or Doctor Juris, whatever it is, a doctorate in jurisprudence. So that's what they set up this program for, as I understand it. What they do is they go there and they have like a blog that you can check out. Here's one guy's testimony. And the interesting thing about this is they are trying guys from 9-11. Yes, this is 2018 and this took place. The date on this, his testimony here is, if you go down, I'm sorry to go so fast, it's probably making your head spin. But you have to go all the way to the bottom to see the date, which is kind of silly. But here it is, the 14th of November of 2018. And they are just trying these guys, still trying them, from 9-11. I'm just kind of amazed here that they are still doing 9-11 hearings. And this one was really bizarre because they had a mold issue. Some of the evidence was contaminated with a bunch of mold. and People got sick while they were trying to do the trial, so they had to take time out. It was really just something else, and it's like... Serious? This is just crazy. We're still trying people for 9-11. Oh, I got to tell you, I was kind of hoping military courts would go a lot faster than that. But evidently not. And maybe this is what Trump did in the courts martial executive order that he did. Maybe it was to streamline this process. Because personally, I think it's kind of crazy that we are still right now in 2018 trying people for 9-11 shouldn't this have been done a long time ago i don't know but anyway the guy who wrote this particular observer report sounded a little liberal in his views and he was oh you know this one guy said he was tortured for three and a half years before he actually got to get mo the cia tortured him well i'm not saying the cia didn't interrogate him but i'm not so sure he was technically tortured but who knows maybe I don't know. That's what they're there to observe, I guess. And it is something that they're, the IU School of Law is doing. So I guess people are doing this right now. They are able to go see this. So, yeah, you have the blog. You have also a link to the Fair Trial Manual, which I'll show you in a minute. And there's Periodic Review Board Project. And then there's... This is from July 2016. I don't know. I haven't seen any that's more recent than that. I'm not sure why they put that one on here, but maybe that's from before when they were setting up the website. Sometimes people do that. They set up a website and then they never change anything on it. So, uh, and there's lots of resources and stuff. If you're interested in law and you're interested in what's going on in Gitmo, 
this is a good source. You can find a lot of information. But anyway, this is the blog post about one of the visits there. And this was the one from November of 2018. And then this tells a little bit more about it. And basically, the Pentagon's Guantanamo Bay Military Commission Convening Authority granted NGO observer status to the IU McKinney Laws Program in International Human Rights, PEARL. The PEARL then established the Military Commission Observation Project, MCOP, to implement PEARL responsibilities as a selected NGO observer. MCOP representatives are traveling to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba to attend, observe, analyze, critique, and publish materials on the hearings. Others from IU McKinney Law may also travel to the Fort Meade, Maryland military base to view the same Guantanamo Bay hearings via a secure video link. All IU McKinney Law affiliates, faculty, staff, students, and graduates are eligible to participate in MCOP activities and are eligible to be considered for travel to Fort Meade or Guantanamo Bay, Cuba for hearings and trials. The MCOP is guided by an advisory council. Now, I don't know. It's possible that this is something that you need to have these NGO observers, the non-governmental observers. Uh, that could very well be. I don't know if that's some of these international military rules, but this is something that is happening right now. It's going on. You can go to Camp Justice down there at Gitmo and uh, it has this observation manual. Let's see if I can find the right tab on that. Nope. This, this is one of the resources they have and again if you're really into law and stuff this is probably something that you find very very interesting it's got all these different criminal law treaties human rights law instruments instruments of international tribunals i mean it's got everything and here's the official u.s military commissions document so lots of stuff on here they even have like this organizational chart to show you how it works from the secretary of defense and then it goes down to the Deputy Secretary of Defense and then it splits off to the Office of Military Commission's Convening Authority and the Department of Defense Office of General Counsel Defense Legal Services Agency and it goes down there uh, on both of those sides so you can see how that's set up. Here's the Office of the Chief Defense Counsel, Office of Military Commission's Office of the Chief Prosecutor. As the organizational chart and that it has significant U.S. Supreme Court opinions related to military commissions. Here are some different things. Uh, it's not a clickable link, which is kind of annoying, but uh, it is there, and you can probably just highlight this and go find what they are. This was from 1866, talk about Indiana, holding that a military commission convened to try Lambden Milligan did not have jurisdiction to try him because he was a citizen of Indiana. Indiana was not in rebellion and civilian courts in Indiana continued to function. So that's interesting, but there are some things down here that kind of show that maybe that is not the case now with uh, case law. I'm really not that knowledgeable about law. I worked as a secretary for a lawyer once, but that was all the further I got. Lots of big words. So this is the manual right here, and this was put together February 26, 2017. So you can go through and look at this and see what all information they give. It's just an overview of the rights and interests. And my assumption is that they set up this organization so it could do observations to make sure that the trials are being held fairly and with human rights involved and everything. You know, I do want that to happen. However, they're prosecuting 9-11 people. Hello, don't you think the people that did 9-11 should already be paying for what they did? I mean, this is crazy. Why are we still keeping them in Gitmo alive? Shouldn't they be punished? Shouldn't they have to pay with their lives like the, all their victims did? I mean, look at all the people who just had another Thanksgiving without their family member because of what these guys did. Why are we still just in the process of prosecuting them? Talk about the wheels of justice going slowly. Oh my goodness, that's just awful. 
Anyway, you can look at this. You can see it has a bunch of different things. 9-11 attacks, immediate aftermath. Again, this is something that if you're really into law, this is going to be interesting to you and probably a lot of things about the right to trial by competent, independent, impartial tribunal, right to effective assistance of counsel. Yes, they do have rights. And so even if we see some upcoming arrests that will be going to get Mo for trial, they also have rights. And we need to respect those rights. Yes, I know they didn't respect people's rights, but we need to make sure that we follow the rule of law. We can't step away from it. But that's one reason why I think it's been taking so long for all this to come together, because they need to follow the rule of law. And that means they have to have evidence. They have to make sure they go through the legal process. And it just takes time. Like I said, they're prosecuting 9-11 people. Okay? So it takes time. And I hope it doesn't take nearly that long for the people that may end up at Gitmo in the near future. Probably because this is about Gitmo, YouTube will demonetize it. Just watch. They demonetized all of my Kavanaugh videos. In one of them, all I did was read a memo from Chuck Grassley, and it's on the Senate Judiciary site. You can go, you can read it, and I just read it, and I said, hey, you know, this is something that you need to look at this report because this is all about Kavanaugh. It's a 414-page report. Yeah, they demonetized it. And well, just anything that had Kavanaugh in it, they demonetized. It's ridiculous. It just is crazy. They're just willy-nilly picking out which ones they want to demonetize. So anyway, that's that particular manual that you can go through and look at at your leisure. I'll make sure the link's down below for that. And then we have, uh, here's a calendar that I found very helpful. And this is the calendar of the court cases. So you can look through and you can see what court cases they're working on. And yes, you can attend this at the Public Observer's Closed Circuit Viewing. So you can just click on that and you can go see when it's going to be. Well, that one was October. That one says it was October 1st. I don't know why it says October. Well, this one says... This one says November 5th, oh, 2 11, 16, so November 16th. So, yeah, this one is going all along in here, and, you know, it's just very interesting, and so that's something you can look at, and here's a little bit about Military Commission's U.S. Court of Military Commission Review, the court calendar, and some of the other stuff that they have here. You know, lots of information out there about things. It's just a matter of digging it all up and then reading through it all. So uh, they also have, here was the chart that I showed you a little bit of, but this says as of 3rd of July, 2016. So it's kind of weird. All of these green ones here, where are they at now is in Gitmo. And then down here are ones that in other places and then the ones down here are considered too dangerous to transfer or repatriate. So there are some on that list too. A lot of them are from Yemen and Pakistan, Kenya. So interesting to look through. I didn't find any that was more current than this. That was the only one I saw linked to. So, but I'll put it down below. You can look over it, see what it is. Uh, this is basically the information, the FAQs for this program. And what it says is, as you know, the Pentagon's Guantanamo Bay Convening Authority granted NGO, non-governmental organization, observer status to the program in International Human Rights Law, PEARL, of Indiana University McKinney School of Law. PEARL, pronounce PEARL. How did you think I knew how to pronounce it? Ha, <laughs> I cheated. Uh, representatives may travel to Guantanamo Bay, Cuba to attend, observe, analyze, critique, and publish hearings in high-profile cases against detainees charged with terrorism-related offenses. Travel may also be to Fort Meade, Maryland, military base, where the same Guantanamo Bay hearings may be viewed via secure video link. Now, actually, what happens is if they end up going to 
Guantanamo Bay. They have to make it to Andrews Air Force Base on their own. They have to pay for however they get there. And then once they make it to Andrews Air Force Base, they get a free trip down to Gitmo. Yeah, it doesn't cost them anything for the plane ride. And while they're down there, they stay in military housing, so it doesn't cost them anything there either. So kind of interesting that they do that. If they're going to be at the Fort Meade one, they do have to provide their travel there and back home, but it doesn't cost anything for them to go in to see it. So they explain all that. That's kind of like what the rest of this haul does. It explains it. I'll put it down below. You can look into it. It's just very interesting. And it's like, this this is just incredible. This case, The principal ongoing hearings relate to two cases, 9-11 defendants. This case is against several persons accused of masterminding the attacks of September 11, 2001 on the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Khalid Shaikh Mohammed KSM is one of the accused. USS Cole defendant, this case is against the person accused of masterminding the suicide attacks against the USS Cole, which was a U.S. Navy destroyer attacked by a small explosive-laden boat when the destroyer was docked in the harbor of Aden, Yemen, which is why all the, those said Yemen on them, on 12th October 2000. The attack killed 17 and wounded 39 members of the USS Cole crew. Hearings in these two cases appear to be and appear to have been scheduled on average once every two months for one to three weeks at a time. Please check the Gitmo court calendar for precise dates. Hearing dates are subject to change. Additional hearings involving other accused may also be scheduled. So those are the two places you can see it. It's just, oh, here was the link to the court calendar that I brought up. So spread over three weeks and are scheduled for April 2014, but that's not what that calendar was was current, if I remember. Yeah, this calendar is, see this calendar is 11-23-18, it's showing today's date, and it's for November 2018. That's just amazing. Wow. I honestly did not know they were still in the process of prosecuting these guys. Wow. This is like majorly slow. Boy, I sure hope it doesn't go that slow for the upcoming arrests. I think I said that once before, but it's worth saying again, right? Yeah. Anyway, so that's what I've got for you. Yes, you could be a Gitmo observer if you want to be. And the program information will all be there. So if you are somebody who's interested in law, if you're taking courses in law, it sounds to me like you can take a course from them and you would be able to do it through them and through this program at IU. Indiana University, there you go, IU. Who knew? I had no idea until I found this. So that's what I've got for you today. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you later.